Now we're going to be going over the upper extremities of the skeletal system and we'll go over the pectoral girdle. Now the pectoral girdle is composed of the clavicle and the scapula posteriorly. Now if we go back to the clavicle, you'll notice that there's a sternal end connected to the sternum, of course, but here's the sternal end. Now we move laterally, you have the acromial end of the clavicle connected to the acromion or acromion process of the scapula. You'll notice that there's actually a coracoid process on the scapula and you can get a sneak peek of the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa, which is on the scapula as well. As we move to the posterior aspect of the scapula, you'll notice the acromion process, you'll notice the spine of the scapula and also the medial border, the lateral border, and the superior border of the scapula. Now let's talk a little bit about the humerus. The humerus has a structure known as the humeral head. Also, it contains a greater tubercle and a lesser tubercle. In between, it has an intertubercular groove or sulcus. As we move distally on the humerus, we notice that there are many structures that are very, very important and very, very cool. We'll notice this structure here. So this entire structure is known as the trochlea. This structure here is known as the capitulum. Medially located, you'll find the medial epicondyle and laterally the lateral epicondyle. Now, the, the trochlea itself interacts with the ulna and more specifically with the trochlear notch. On the anterior aspect of the humerus, we'll also find that there's a little depression and this is known as the coronoid fossa, which interacts directly with the coronoid process on the ulna. Now, the little capitulum actually is interacting with the radial head of the radius. Let's move to the posterior aspect of the humerus and we'll notice that there's a large depression. And as I told you before, think of Spain, think ole, olecranon fossa. In turn, there's an olecranon process on the ulna. Okay, so these two are interacting. So this right here is your elbow. So I want you to take your elbow right now and hit it against the table, but don't do it too hard, okay? All right, let's move now to the anterior aspect of these bones. And you'll find that on the radius, there is a radial tuberosity. And as we move distally, you'll see the stylus process of the radius, right? And we'll find that there's a stylus process to the ulna, but that's a little bit difficult to see and I'm having a hard time pointing to it, but it's a tiny little tooth-like structure and I, I think you can see it a little bit there um, with the contrast of the door behind the bone. So it's a tiny little fang-like structure. All right, so these bones here that you see now, those would be the carpals. All the bones here from this area here all the way down to here would be the metacarpals and the rest of them would be the phalanges. Okay, each individual bone in these areas near phalanges are known as a phalanx. Okay, P-H-A-L-A-N-X. So how do we name these guys? So this would be the distal phalanx, this would be the proximal phalanx on your thumb, and over here on these other phalanges you would have the distal phalanx, middle phalanx, and proximal phalanx. And remember, you must number them starting from where? One, two, three, four, and five. So how do I name this one here? Well, this would be your one, two, three, your third, phalanx, your third distal phalanx of your what? Of your right or left? Hmm. Of your right hand. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you back another time. Bye.